MB373 high speed single thread chain stitch button attaching machine adjustment section now we'll begin our training about the MB373 high speed single thread chain stitch button attaching machine Number 1. Lubrication. Apply Juki New Defrix Oil Number 1 to the components painted red. Be careful not to apply too much oil to the face plate, as this may result in oil leakage. Tilt the machine head. Remove the arm bed connection guide pin. Remove the belt. Apply oil to the lubrication felt A located inside the bed mounting base. Apply grease periodically to gear B and gear C. Apply grease periodically to the driving pulley D. Remove the pressure applying lever E. Then remove pulley F, spring pull G for the main shaft and spring H. Then apply grease to the shaft and bearing I of the pulley. Attach the pressure applying lever in place. Make sure that the driving pulley moves by 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters at the time of stop motion. Number two, confirming the direction of rotation of the sewing machine. The sewing machine must rotate in the direction of the arrow as observed from the pulley side. Number three, types of needle and how to attach a needle. Use a TQ by seven needle as a standard needle for the machine. When sewing lightweight materials, including men's shirts or blouses, use a TQ by one needle. The overall length of the TQ by one is 10 millimeters shorter than the TQ by seven. Holding the long groove on the needle, insert the needle until it comes in contact with the top of the needle hole in the needle bar. Then tighten the screw. Adjusting the size of the button holes, measure the distance between holes in a button to be sewn and set the lengthwise speed amount and the crosswise speed amount accordingly. To set the lengthwise speed amount for the two hole buttons, Set the lever to position B for two hold buttons while pushing down the lengthwise speed adjusting lever A. When sewing four hold buttons, set the lengthwise speed adjusting lever to the scale corresponding to the measured distance between holes in the button. To adjust the crosswise speed amount, loosen nut C of the crosswise speed hinge screw and set pointer D. Then tighten nut C. Adjusting the needle entry point with respect to the holes in the button. Turn the sewing machine by hand to confirm that the needle enters just the center of the respective holes in the button being spaced equidistantly from the hole periphery of the holes.
If the distance between needle entry points is too long or too short, correct the needle entry points by adjusting the lengthwise feed amount or the crosswise feed amount properly. If the distance between the needle entry points is correct and the needle fails to enter just the center of the holes in the button, adjust the needle entry point by moving the button clamp jaw lever properly. Adjust the button clamp jaw lever. First remove button clamp pressure spring E. Then loosen two screws in button clamp mechanism base F. Move the button clamp mechanism base properly until the correct needle entry points with respect to the holes in the button are obtained. screws in the button clamp mechanism base. Attach the button clamp pressure spring in place and confirm that the needle entry points are correct. Number 5. Adjusting the number of stitches. 8, 16, and 32 stitches are available on the standard model. 8 or 16 stitches for 2-hole buttons, 16 or 32 for 4-hole buttons. When sewing two hole buttons, the needle throws to the right at the start of sewing. The seventh and eighth stitches are tie stitches at the end of sewing. When the number of stitches to sew two hole buttons is set to 16, the seventh and eighth stitches and fifteenth and sixteenth stitches are tie stitches, which means tie stitching is performed twice. sewing four hold buttons, the needle first throws to the right at the start of sewing. The seventh and eighth stitches are tie stitches, and also the fifteenth and sixteenth stitches are tie stitches for the holes located on this side as observed by you. Set the number of stitches to 8, raise stop motion cam knob E while drawing the knob toward you. When stitch adjusting cam A makes a half rotation, the number of stitches is set to 8. To set the number of stitches to 16, bring stop motion cam knob E to the right side. At this time, set the knob to the lower position. When stitch adjusting cam A makes a rotation, the number of stitches is set to 16. To set the number of stitches to 32, loosen bolt B and stop our screw D with the number of stitches set to 16, and tighten the screw while pressing the stitches selecting latch down by hand. 
When the stitch adjusting cam makes two rotations, the number of stitches is set to 32. Number six, threading the machine head. Thread the machine head in the following order. Number one, thread guide A. Thread guide B of number one, tension. Number one, tension disc C. Number two, tension disc D. L-shaped thread guide E. Thread pull-off lever F. Thread guide G. Thread pull-off lever nipper H. Number two, thread guide I. Front cover, thread guide J. Now, pressing the nut of the nipper releasing pin bushing, pull the thread towards you. Then thread, thread guide number three, K. Thread take up lever L. Number three, tension disc N, thread guide number four, M. And needle O. Finally, pull the thread from the needle eyelet by about 60 to 70 millimeters. Number seven, adjusting the thread tension. The tension controller number 1A works to control the tension applied to the thread that is used to attach a button. The thread tension can be set to a lower value. If it is lower, slightly tighten the tension controller number 1. Number two, tension controller B functions to control the tension applied to the thread sewn on the wrong side of the material. If it is lower, increase the spring pressure. The tension controlled by the tension controller number two should be higher than the tension controlled by the tension controller number one, and it changes in accordance with the thread, material, and thickness of buttons to be used. If the thread tension is insufficient, increase the spring pressure properly. Number eight, operation sequence. Depress the foot pedal and the stop motion hook A goes up. The pressure applying lever B pressing the pulley until driving pulley C starts rotating. At the same time, button clamp lifting link D moves to release the button clamp lifting plate and make lifting lever Z go up. Nipper bar J moves and the lifting plate moves. Thread pull-off lever E, nipper F, and thread tension-releasing lever G move to make button clamp H come down. Stop motion tripping lever cam roller I is placed on the periphery of stitch adjusting cam L, and the sewing machine starts running. Number two, tension disc K releases thread tension once during one stroke of the needle bar. When stop motion tripping lever cam roller I comes off the periphery of stitch adjusting cam L, pressure applying lever B makes pulley C run idle. At this time, button clamp lifting link O moves to the right, and button clamp forked rod P makes lifting plate Q come down. enters the stop motion state by coasting. When the lifting plate comes down, nipper bar J and lifting lever Z move. 
button clamp H goes up. Nipper F clamps the thread so that the thread on the needle is not fed, and stitch adjusting lever E slackens the thread to prevent stitch skipping at the start of sewing. Thread separation nail U of the moving knife separates the thread, and moving knife B and the counter knife trim the threads. The machine operates in this way. Number nine, principle of sewing. The needle comes down and looper A tucks needle thread B. To secure the thread triangle, yoke slide C securely holds D. The looper point passes through the thread triangle tucked by the looper. The yoke slides go back immediately after the looper passes through the thread triangle. These steps are repeated to form stitches. Number 10, adjusting thread pull-off lever E. The thread pull-off lever functions to loosen the thread at the time of stop motion, thereby preventing stitch skipping at the start of sewing. If the thread excessively slackens, thread F at the sewing start appears from the right-hand side of the button or on the wrong side of the material. If the thread does not sufficiently slacken, the thread appears from the left-hand side of the button. In this case, several stitches may not be properly formed or stitch skipping may occur on either side at the start of sewing. To obtain the standard adjustment, adjust so that a clearance of 8 millimeters is provided between thread pull-off lever E and L-shaped thread guide L at the time of stop motion. To adjust the clearance to the standard value, move nipper bar block N to the right or left. If the thread end appears from the right-hand side hole in the button after sewing the button, move the nipper bar block to the left or either side of hole in the button is not sewn, move the nipper bar block to the right. The length of thread remaining at the sewing end should be approximately three to four millimeters. If the thread is too long, as shown in A, the length of thread remaining in the needle becomes shorter. In this case, stitch skipping will occur at the start of sewing the next button. Thread O is the thread at the start of sewing. Thread P is the thread at the end of sewing. Number 11, adjusting the needle bar A. Turn the pulley to bring the needle bar to the lowest point of its stroke. Loosen the needle bar connection screw. When using TQ by one needle, align the upper marker line of marker lines S on the needle bar with N face C of the needle bar lower bushing. When using a TQ by 7 needle, line B on the needle bar with it. Holding the needle bar so that its inclined plane faces towards you, tighten the needle bar connection screw. Now, attach the needle. Number 12, adjusting the needle and the looper E. Loosen screw F in the looper, screw G in the yoke slide triangular cam, and screw H in the looper mounting shaft. Adjust the clearance between end face I of the looper and end face J of the looper support link to approximately one millimeter. Now temporarily tighten the screw. Adjust the clearance between cam K and shaft L to O and tighten the screw in the yoke slide cam while aligning marker N on yoke slide triangular cam with looper mounting shaft. Turn the pulley until the lower marker line on the needle bar is aligned with the bottom end face of the needle bar lower bushing. At this time, align yoke slide triangular cam O with the center of yoke slide positioning finger Q. 
Now, adjust so that the blade point of the hook meets the center of the needle marked by the arrow by moving looper mounting shaft R. At this time, a clearance of 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters should be provided between the looper and the needle. To adjust the clearance between the looper and the needle, loosen the screw in the looper and move the looper back or forward properly. Number 13, adjusting needle guide A. Loosen the screw in the needle guide and move the needle guide back or forward to adjust so that a clearance of 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters is obtained between the needle and the needle guide when the needle bar is in the lowest position of its stroke. Adjusting yoke slide B. Cam O makes the yoke slide move to the right and left in the direction of the arrow, and slide the yoke cam D moves it back and forth. The yoke slide makes a triangular motion by operating cam O in combination with cam D. Adjust so that an approximately 0.5 to 1 millimeter clearance is provided between the yoke slide and the needle when the needle is in the lowest position of its stroke. Loosen the screw in the yoke slide cam and the screw in the yoke slide triangular cam. marker line E on the yoke slide triangular cam with marker line F on the looper mounting shaft and tighten the screw. Adjust the longitudinal position of the yoke slide by moving the yoke slide cam back or forward so that a clearance of 0.5 to 1 millimeter is provided between the needle and the yoke slide while aligning marker line F on the looper mounting shaft with the marker line J on the yoke slide cam. Then tighten the screw in the yoke slide cam. To confirm the yoke slide timing, set a four hold button on the machine and turn the pulley by hand to operate the machine until the machine actually sews the ninth or tenth stitch of sewing the button. moves backward when the sewing machine sews the 8th or ninth stitch. At this time, the looper point should pass the center of thread triangle G. In addition, adjust the triangular cam and the yoke slide cam so that the yoke slide moves backward immediately after the looper point has passed the thread triangle. When sewing a four-hole button, the mutton moves in the direction of the arrow at the ninth stitch. As a result, the thread triangle shifts from its correct position. In this state, the looper point cannot pass the center of the thread triangle smoothly. At this time, adjust the longitudinal position of the yoke slide using the yoke slide cam to allow the looper point to pass through the thread triangle. If the looper point fails to pass the center of the thread triangle, as shown in K, stitch skipping may result. If 
the looper fails to pass through the thread triangle, stitch skipping and thread breakage may result. fails to pass the center of the thread triangle at the ninth or tenth stitch, make a proper adjustment by moving the yoke slide longitudinal cam back or forward. Number 15, adjusting nipper A. The nipper works to hold the needle thread when the sewing machine enters its stop motion state to obtain a well tenth stitch at the sewing end. Adjust so that a clearance of 0.8 to 1.2 millimeters is provided between nipper block B and nipper A while the sewing machine is in operation. Loosen screw C and adjust the nipper bar block D to the right or left. Number 16, installing L-shaped lifting lever A. Attach washer B cushion C and washer D in the frame. Set in place in the following order, cushion H, stop motion cushion washer G, moving knife return spring F, and L-shaped lifting lever E. Make sure that the sewing machine enters the complete stop motion state as shown by the arrow. Closely fit the jaw of the arm marked by the arrow to the end face of the stop motion cushion washer and fix them together, eliminating play by tightening screw K. Number 17, adjusting the height of the button clamp jaw lever L. Adjust so that a clearance C of 9mm is provided between the sole of button clamp jaw lever N and the top surface of feed plate M when the machine is in the stop motion position. Loosen the screw in the button clamp lifting hook and adjust the clearance to 9mm by moving button clamp lifting hook O up or down. Adjusting the work pressing force. Loosen double nut P and adjust so that a clearance of 4 to 5 millimeters is provided in the work pressing force adjusting rod. Number 19. Adjusting button clamp stop lever Q. Adjust the button clamp stop lever to allow a button to be set on or removed from the button clamp jaw lever with ease. Adjust so that a clearance of 0 to 0 0.5 millimeters is provided between button clamp stop lever Q and screw R in the button clamp slide guide. Then tighten screw S in the button clamp stop lever. Number 20. Adjusting the timing to release the tension of the number 2 tension disc A. The number two tension disc should release the thread when the height of the ascending needle becomes 54 to 57 millimeters. To adjust the tension release timing, adjust the height of the number two tension disc first to the height of the number one tension disc. Now, tighten lock nut B of tension post number two. Screw C in the needle bar lever fulcrum shaft.
Turn the pulley by hand until a distance of 54 to 57 millimeters is provided between end face D of the needle bar upper bushing and top end E of the ascending needle bar. Thread tension disc number two. Turn the needle bar lever fulcrum shaft while pulling the thread towards you until you can smoothly draw it without resistance. At the position where the thread tension becomes lower, tighten the screw in the needle bar lever. If the thread sewn on the wrong side of the material is not well tensed, Retard the tension release timing of tension disc number two. If thread breakage frequently occurs, advance the tension release timing of tension disc number two. Number 21, adjusting the position of moving knife A. Thread separation nail B works to separate the thread on the needle side from the thread on the material side. Moving knife C moves towards counter knife E until they engage each other to trim the thread on the material side. Attach throat plate H in place while fitting moving knife G in the hole F in the thread trimmer connecting plate. Turn the pulley to make the sewing machine enter the stop motion state. When the machine enters the stop motion state and the button clamp is fully raised, a standard clearance of 13 millimeters should be obtained between front connecting plate I and end face N of the slit in the throat plate. To adjust the clearance to 13 millimeters, moving knife positioning gauge J is necessary. Loosen two nuts K of the screws in the thread trimmer connecting plate and adjust the clearance to 13 millimeters by moving thread trimmer connection plate L back or forward. Number 22, adjusting the clearance provided between the button clamp lifting lever A and adjusting screw B. Adjust the adjusting screw so that a clearance of 0.5 millimeters is provided between the end face of the lifting lever and the adjusting screw when the sewing machine is in the stop motion state. When the sewing machine is actuated, screw C comes in contact with A while reducing the impact by means of cushion E. Number 23, adjusting lengthwise feed cam F and crosswise feed cam G. Align punch mark H with marker dot I on the cam when the sewing machine is in the stop motion state. Loosen the two screws in the crosswise feed cam and the three screws in the lengthwise feed cam. To adjust the cams, turn the pulley first to make stop motion cam J come in contact with stop motion hook K to bring the sewing machine to the stop motion position. Press the crosswise feed cam against the upper frame and tighten the screws while aligning punch mark L with pointer N. Adjusting the lengthwise feed cam, you will find two marker dots on the cam. Using marker dot O for the adjustment of the lengthwise feed cam, the machine starts sewing a button from holes located on the side towards you. Align marker dot L with pointer N and tighten the screws in the cam. The lengthwise feed cam has three screws. Be sure to tighten all of the three screws without fail. The stop 
motion position is the position where stop motion hook J comes in close contact with the end face of stop motion cam K. Number 24, adjusting stitch adjusting cam A. Adjust so that a clearance of 0.8 millimeters is provided between stop motion tripping lever cam roller B and indented section C of the cam when the machine is in the stop motion position. Adjust the clearance to 0.8 millimeters by moving the stitch adjusting cam. Number 25. Adjusting the height of stop motion cam J and stop motion hook K. To adjust, place stop motion tripping lever cam roller B on the periphery of the stitch adjusting cam. Loosen pressure applying lever B to prevent play in the stop motion shaft. Loosen screw S in the stop motion tripping lever. Adjust so the clearance of 2.4 millimeters is provided between the stop motion cam and the stop motion hook. Tighten the screw in the stop motion tripping lever while eliminating play in the stop motion shaft. Securely fix the pressure applying lever. Now, make sure that a clearance of 2.4 millimeters is provided between the stop motion cam and the stop motion hook. Make the sewing machine enter the stop motion state and confirm that the pulley runs idle. Adjust the stop motion hook, the clearance link C will automatically change, so it is necessary for you to readjust button clamp lifting link C when you have adjusted the stop motion hook. Number 26, adjusting pressure applying lever A. Adjust so that a clearance of 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters is provided between the pressure applying lever and the pulley when the sewing machine is in the stop motion position. Adjust the clearance to the specified value by loosening or tightening adjusting screw B. does not run idle when the machine is actuated. Number 27, adjusting button clamp lifting plate C. When the machine enters the stop motion state, button clamp lifting plate C is engaged with button clamp forked rod D to move the button clamp lifting lever, the nipper bar, and the moving knife. At the end of sewing, the stop motion tripping lever cam roller comes down to the indented section of the stitch adjusting cam marked by the arrow. The stop motion hook comes down, the button clamp forked rod lever shaft moves to the right, and the button clamp lifting plate is engaged with the button clamp forked rod. At this time, the button clamp lifting plate goes up. The lifting lever and the nipper bar move. To adjust the button clamp lifting plate, actuate the sewing machine first. Place the roller on the periphery of the stitch adjusting cam. At this time, a clearance of 0.5 to 0.8 millimeters should be obtained between the button clamp lifting plate and the button clamp forked rod. Then, loosen screw G in the button clamp forked rod lever shaft. Adjust so that a clearance of 0.5 to 0.8 millimeters is provided between the button clamp lifting plate and the button clamp forked rod using the screw in the button clamp forked rod lever shaft. 
while moving the lifting plate guide rod shaft up or down to allow the button clamp lifting plate to smoothly fit in the groove on the sliding roller H. If the clearance is too small, the button clamp lifting plate may be pushed against the button clamp forked rod. As a result, the sewing machine may fail to enter the stop motion state. If the clearance is too large, the button clamp lifting plate may not go up when the machine is in the stop motion state. Number 28. Installing tension releasing lever A of thread tension number 1. Adjust so that the thread tension releasing lever is leveled to allow tension disc number 1 to release the thread when the machine is in the stop motion state. Make sure that the thread tension releasing lever of tension disc number 1 does not come in contact with tension disc number 1 when the sewing machine is actuated. Number 29, adjusting feed plate C. Adjust the feed plate so that the needle entry point is spaced equidistantly from all sides of the hull and the throat plate located under the work clamp. The feed plate comes in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Adjust the position of the feed plate so that an equal clearance is provided between the needle entry point and all sides of the hull in the feed plate. Then tighten the screw. This completes the explanation of the adjusting procedure of the one needle, single thread, chain stitch button attaching machine. How to handle the LBH-780 Important safety instructions 1. Adjusting the position of pump body A Adjust the height of pump body A using screw D so that filter screen B mounted on the suction port of pump is positioned 2 to 3 millimeters lower than bed screw stud C. 2. Adjusting starting lever, adjusting bolt E. When the machine is in the stop motion state, press starting lever H away from you. Now, loosen nut I and adjust clearance K to 0.3 to 0.7 millimeter using release bolt J. 3. Putting the flat belt. Remove spring 2 and hinge screw 1. Put belt 3 in belt shifter so that arrow A that indicates the direction of rotation meets the direction of belt rotation. Reinstall screws 1 and spring 2. Lifting up hook lifting lever 5 in the direction of the arrow, pass the belt through the space provided between latches 6 and 7. Put the belt in belt shifter 8 on the speed reduction gear side and put the belt on tension cooling 9. Put fixing claw 10 on the groove on ratchet 11 as counted from the bottom to tense the belt. 4. Lubrication. Filling oil reservoir N with oil. Pour new defrix oil number 1 until the high mark in the oil reservoir is reached. If the oil surface level is lower than the low mark, replenish oil. 5. Checking oil sight window O. Check to be sure that oil flows inside two tubes. 
In tube P, oil flows to the left on the lubricating side. In tube Q, oil remaining in the face plate R circulates to flow to the right. Run the machine at a low speed and you can see the oil flow clearly. If dirty oil is used, smudges in the oil adheres on the filter screen and the oil will fail to flow smoothly. In this event, replace the oil in the oil reservoir with new oil and detach filter T and wash it clean. To attach filter screen S, put spring W, urethane X and two filters T in the filter screen and tighten set screw while pressing the filter against oil pump base U. For safe operation, if you try to lift the work clamp check before the feed action completes, the work clamp may fail to go up or can jar. Be sure to lift the work clamp check in the stop motion state. 7. Checking the direction of rotation of the sewing machine. If the pulley turns in the direction of the arrow, the direction of rotation of your machine is correct. 8. Adjusting the V-belt tension. Adjust the tension of two V-belts so that both of them sag by approximately 10 mm when you lightly press them. The V-belt tension can be adjusted by shifting the motor to the right or left. When adjusting the V-belt tension, take care to straighten the V-belts. 9. Adjusting tension 3 of the flat belt. The right side of the flat belt is attached with a narrow mark as shown in A. Fit fixing claw 10 in the groove 2 on ratchet 11 as counted from the bottom to tense the belt. 10 low speed run and emergency stop of the machine. To cause your machine to run under the low speed mode, lower the manual stop handle G straight. Even when the machine is running under the high speed mode, you can immediately cause the machine to run under the low speed mode only by lowering the stop handle. Emergency stop of the machine. Turn the stop handle in direction I, then the machine will stop immediately. Depress the foot pedal and the sewing machine will start again. If you have stopped your machine in emergency during sewing, or want to restart sewing in the event of thread breakage from a position slightly before the point of thread breakage, turn feed handle J in the direction of the arrow to change the position of the feed. If you should turn the feed handle with the needle penetrated in the material, the needle can bend. To avoid this, be sure to turn the pulley to allow the needle to come off the material before turning the feed handle. Operation to be taken when the knife's dropping action is not necessary. In such a case where the bobbin has run out of thread, the knife can drop if the machine enters the stop motion state without trimming the needle thread. Since the knife is designed to drop the material, re-sewing will become difficult. In this case, keep lever A held slightly pressed down to prevent the knife from dropping. Well, attaching the needle. Holding the needle with its mark on the shank face toward you, as observed from the front face of the machine, insert it into the needle bar until it will go no further and fix with the screw. Use the standard needle DPX5J ballpoint needle. Winding a bobbin. Bind the thread in the order of 
Guide Hall 1, Engine Disc 2, Thread Guide 3, and Bobbin 4. Put the bobbin on the shaft and it will go no further. Set Thread Guide F. If the motor runs, the thread will be wound on the bobbin. Once the bobbin is wound with the predetermined amount of thread, the machine will automatically stop. Adjusting the amount of thread to be wound on the bobbin, loosen nut G. Tighten the screw to reduce the amount of thread to be wound on the bobbin. Threading the bobbin case. Place the bobbin in the bobbin case so that it turns in direction I when drawing the bobbin thread in direction H. 14. Threading the machine head. Thread the machine head in the following order. Thread stand, thread gap plate E. Pass the thread behind the tension controller number 1F and thread pulling wire G. Thread retainer H. Tension disc number 2I. Thread take up spring G. Thread guide K. Thread guide A. Thread take up lever L. Thread guide N. Thread check wire O. Thread guide P. And thread guide Q. Then pass the thread through a needle eyelet from the right hand side to the left hand side of needle R. Thread guide Q has to be threaded differently depending on the thread to be used. If you use cotton thread or spun thread, pass the thread only through hole S. If you pass the thread through holes S and T, the thread will provide such an excessive resistance as to produce poorly tensed seam. If you use tetron thread, pass the thread through both holes T and S to prevent the thread from flapping. Fifteen. Adjusting stitch formation. Fifteen one. Configuration. As observed from sewing start position A, section B is called first bar taking section, and C is called left side parallel section, and D is called right side parallel section, and E is called second bar taking section. This machine is able to perform button holding with two different kinds of seams, such as purl stitches F and whip stitches G. 15-2. Pearl stitching. In bar taking sections B and E, needle thread and bobbin thread interlace with each other almost at the center of the material's thickness. For parallel sections C and D, needle thread tension has to be increased so that the needle thread passes just the center of seams and the bobbin thread fully appears on the right side of the material to cause bobbin thread to interlace with the needle thread as if a needle thread stitch is placed between two bobbin thread stitches. This type of seam is firm in appearance and is usually used for men's shirts. 15.3. Whip stitching. Whip stitches are zigzag stitches in which only the needle thread appears on the right side and the bobbin thread only appears on the wrong side of the material since the needle thread and bobbin thread interlace with each other almost at the center of the material thickness for bar taking section B and C and parallel section C and D. This type of seam is soft in appearance and is usually used for sewing knits and knitted fabrics. Stitch type can easily be changed over between the purl stitching and whip stitching only by adjusting the thread tension. 15.4. Adjusting the thread tension. Adjust the needle thread tension for bar taking sections B and E using tension controller number 1H. Adjust the thread tension for left and right side parallel sections C and D using tension controller number 2I. For both tension controllers, turn the controller clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease the thread tension. 15.5. Adjusting pearl stitches. Adjusting the bobbin thread tension. Adjust the bobbin thread tension approximately 10 to 15 grams. Slight decrease the bobbin thread tension for synthetic filament thread or increase it for cotton thread or spun thread K. Since idling prevention spring L is mounted inside the bobbin case, 
The bobbin thread tension is further increased by approximately 5 grams when installed in the hook. As a guide, adjust the bobbin thread tension to such an extent that when you hold the thread end coming up, the bobbin case and carefully shake it up and down, the bobbin case gradually come down. Adjusting thread take up spring M. The appropriate stroke is 6 to 8 millimeters and the appropriate tension is approximately 20 to 30 grams. If the stroke is too small, inadequate crest of side parallel seams will result. If it is too large, the crests of seam will be twisted. Adjusting the arm thread guide A. Thread take up amount is adjusted using thread guide A. Adjust the thread take up amount in accordance with the thickness of sewing product to be sewn. If poorly tense seams are produced, shift thread guide A to the right. If you should sh shift it too far to the right, thread can easily break. If thread breakage arises, shift the thread guide to the left. Adjusting the needle thread tension. Firstly, adjust the thread tension for bar tacking sections B and E using tension controller number 1H to allow the needle thread and bobbin thread to interlace with each other at approximately center of the material thickness. Secondly, adjust the thread tension for parallel sections C and D so as to produce adequately formed seam crests. Tension controller number 2i has a spring that delivers a high tension as compared with the spring mounted in tension controller number 1H. Be sure not to tighten tension controller number 2i to exceed the required tension, since the excessively tightened tension controller can give rise to thread breakage. 15.6. Adjusting whip stitches. To produce neatly finished whip stitches, the bobbin thread tension has to be basically increased. Adjust the bobbin thread tension to approximately 20 to 30 grams. Adjust the needle thread tension using tension controller number 1H. For whip stitching, thread tension is consistent for both bar taking sections and parallel side sections. So, adjust tension controller number 2I so that its tension disc will apply no tension to the thread. If the bobbin thread tension is insufficient, the needle thread tension will also decrease correspondingly. As a result, the needle thread stitch will be made on the wrong side of the material to cause double tucking, resulting in thread breakage and thread slip-off. 15.7. Adjusting the sewing with synthetic thread. When synthetic thread is used for sewing, in particular, thread slip-off and thread breakage can frequently arise. To avoid such troubles, following adjustments are necessary when using synthetic thread or sewing synthetic fabric or mixed fabric. To prevent thread breakage or stitch skipping due to the hot needle or rupture or welding of thread and fabric resulting from the needle heated by penetration resistance of the fabric, following measures have to be taken. Use silicone oil lubricating unit B. Use a super needle C for synthetic needle. A higher count needle is recommended since it will reduce the penetration resistance. Stitch formation. Since various conditions affect the stitch formation, it is rather difficult to determine how to adjust it. Subsequent basic points should be noted when using synthetic thread. The amount of thread to be wound on bobbin D should be adjusted to 80% of the bobbin capacity. Adjust tension E to be applied during winding of the bobbin to approximately 20 grams. If the correct is applied, not only neatly finished seam crest will be produced for parallel sections, but idling of the bobbin will be prevented. Place the bobbin in the bobbin case and adjust the tension applied when drawing the bobbin thread out from the bobbin case to approximately 0 to 5 grams. Idling of the bobbin in the bobbin case can be effectively prevented by using bobbin case F provided with an idling prevention spring. Place the bobbin case in the hook, then adjust the idling prevention spring height so that approximately 20 grams tension is applied to the bobbin thread. Use thread guide G with two holes. 
This will prevent the thread from flapping near the needle bar, thereby avoiding thread breakage. In the case where the thread guide designed for synthetic thread is used when sewing cotton thread or spun thread, be sure to remember not to thread hole age in the guide. If the two holes are threaded with cotton thread or spun thread, poorly tensed seams will be produced. 16. Adjusting the buttonhole length. Set pointer A at a desired calibration marking and tighten the nut. Conduct sewing to check the actual seams produced. Then, finally adjust the buttonhole length to such an extent that bar taking sections C and D will never be cut by the knife. Adjusting the overedging width and the lateral position of seams with respect to buttonhole 171 needle throwing. The needle travels from the right to left to produce stitches. E is in the left baseline. F represents the right baseline. G is overedging width of parallel sections and H is bar taking width of bar taking section. Seventeen two, adjusting overedging with G and bar taking with H. Tighten screw K to increase the overedging width of parallel sections or loosen to decrease it. When adjusting the overedging width of parallel sections, also adjust right baseline L at the same time so as to prevent the right hand side seams from being cut by the knife. Now adjust the bar taking width. Tighten screw M to increase the bar taking width or loosen to decrease it. Calibration markings N indicate the bar taking width. Set the upper and lower pointers O at an approximately same value and perform trial stitching. Then appropriately adjust the needle throwing width and bar taking width. The calibration markings should be used as a guide. 17.3. Adjusting left baseline P and right baseline Q. Tighten screw R to shift the left baseline to the left or loosen to shift it to the right. Adjust the left baseline so that the knife, when dropping, will not cut the seam on the right hand side of the left baseline. Remember that the left baseline is not always required to be adjusted even when the overedging width is changed. right baseline, tighten screw S to shift the stitches on the right parallel section to the left or loosen to shift them to the right. Adjust the position of the baseline so that the knife, when dropped, will not cut the thread and so that no fabric yarn remains inside the buttonhole. Whenever you have changed the needle throwing width or the position of the baselines, check to be sure that the work clamp check will not come in contact with the needle. Changing the number of stitches by gear replacement. Gears determine the number of stitches. 30 different number of stitches can be sewn ranging from 54 to 345. Replace the gears according to the desired number of stitches. Spur gears. Gears have alphanumeric inscriptions such as J, G and N and 1, 2, 3, 1, 5, 2, etc. Combine gears so that have the same alphabetic inscription surface and the work clamp check is not equidistantly spaced in lateral position with respect to the knife slit, just the lateral position of the work clamp check holder K. To adjust, loosen first screw L, then holding slide roller M from the right and left with connecting pin N and collar O to avoid the lateral play in the roller, move roller M to the right and left to adjust so that the work clamp check is equidistantly placed against the knife slit in the lateral direction.
Tighten screw L. Lift the work clamp check to make sure that the rubber has no play. Nine. Adjusting the timing to drop the knife. The knife should be so adjusted to descend to cut the material before final two or three stitches are formed while the sewing speed is being reduced until the complete stop motion is reached. To adjust, firstly start up the machine. Move the feed using the feed handle until the position at which knife bar A goes up is reached. Then, lifting lever B, turn the pulley by hand to check how many stitches are required to be sewn before the machine stops, after the knife has actuated. Adjust so that the knife is dropped to two or three stitches before the machine stops. Timing to drop the knife is adjusted by appro appropriately changing the installing position of knife driving cam C. Shift knife driving cam in the direction of the arrow to advance the timing to drop the knife. 10. Adjusting the longitudinal and lateral position of throat plate A. The lateral position of the throat plate should be adjusted so that the knife drops at the center of knife slots in the throat plate. The longitudinal position of the throat plate should be adjusted by changing the installing position of the throat plate assembly B so that the needle is equidistantly spaced with respect to the needle entry slot. 11. Adjusting the position of knife bar driving lever bell crank C. The knife bar driving lever bell crank should be positioned so that it is spaced 0.05 to 0.2 mm from knife bar driving crank D when knife bar driving crank D is in its lowest position. Start up the sewing machine. Push ratchet pull E while pressing lever E. Turn the pulley by hand. Engage knife bar driving crank D with knife bar driving lever crank C and move the knife bar driving crank to its lowest position. Shift stopper screw F up and down to adjust so that the clearance of 0.05-0.2 mm is provided between the screw and knife bar driving lever bell crank. If you turn the handle with the machine head tilted, the handle may be locked. In this case, knife bar driving crank D is engaged with the knife bar driving lever bell crank. To unlock the handle, disengage knife bar driving crank by hand from the knife bar driving lever bell crank. Twelve. Adjusting the position of stop motion lever catch A and latch B. To adjust stop motion lever catch A, place the protruding portion E of stop motion cam so that it runs over the top end of latch C. At this time, loosen screw M and move catch A up and down to adjust so that the clearance of 0.3 to 0.7 mm is provided between catch A and latch B. 13. Position of low speed cam J. Dimension A should be changed in accordance with the number of stitches to be used to adjust the number of stitches to be sewn at a low speed till the machine stops for approximately 7 to 10. If you shift the low speed cam in the direction of the arrow, the number of stitches to be sewn from the start of low speed operation to the stop motion will be reduced. Adjust the number of stitches by shifting the low speed cam. Adjust tension A to 10 to 12 mm for 93 stitches or less. 5 mm for 93 to 123 stitches or 0 mm for 120 stitches or more. 14. Position of belt shifter I of the machine head. Belt shifter I should be positioned so that fat belt C is placed 0.5 to 1 mm away from the end of groove of the pulley during idling. 
In addition, change the posi position of the belt shifter I so that it is fully fitted on driving pulley E while the machine is in operation. 15. Position of reduction gear shifter A. Adjust reduction gear shifter A as if the belt shifter of the machine head. Position reduction gear shifter A to allow the flat belt to be spaced 0.5 to 1 mm from the end of groove on the pulley during idling. In addition, change the position of reduction gear shifter A using its crew so that it is fully fitted on driving pulley B while the machine is in operation. If shifter cam unit F fails to move smoothly, accidents such as a high speed stop motion will arise. So it is necessary to apply grease to the cam unit for smooth operation. The shifter moves 40 mm as standard when the machine running at a high speed enters the stop motion state or reduces its speed at a low one. Adjust the travel amount of the shifter by tightening or loosening screw C in the shifter pin support. Adjust the stopper screw so that the flat belt is spaced 0.5 to 1 mm from the end face of the pulley when the machine runs at a high speed. Position of starting link C. Starting link C should be positioned so that it is spaced 0.5 to 0.8 mm from presser bar lifting lever D. Loosen nut F and adjust the position of the starting link by turning hinge screw E. Seventeen. Adjusting the height of needle thread trimmer A. Set the needle thread trimmer as low as possible, provided that it does not touch the work time check. Loosen the screw and perform the vertical positioning. After the adjustment, place a material of which thickness is approximately 4 mm under the work clamp check. Then move the presser bar lifting lever up and down to check to be sure that the needle thread trimmer does not come in contact with the work clamp check. 18. Longitudinal travel of the needle thread trimmer. The needle thread trimmer should be adjusted so that it travels by 4.8 to 5 mm in the longitudinal direction. To find the longitudinal travel of the needle thread trimmer, measure the travel that needle thread trimmer shaft C makes from the state where the work clamp check is raised to the state where the work clamp check is not raised. Loosen screw F and move cam roller shaft G to the right and left to adjust the longitudinal travel of the needle thread trimmer. Move cam roller shaft to the right to increase the travel of the needle thread trimmer or to the left to decrease it. You should finally adjust the travel of the needle thread trimmer. Take care not to move the cam roller shaft excessively. 19. Longitudinal and lateral position of the needle thread trimmer. The needle thread trimmer should be adjusted so that its portion H meets center of the needle A when the trimmer travels to the forward travel end. In addition, adjust the needle thread trimmer so that its stop end I protrudes from the center of the knife stop by 5 mm to the right. Loosen the screws and adjust the longitudinal and lateral position of the needle thread trimmer holder. Check to be sure that protruding portion K of the needle thread trimmer holder does not come off the groove on bracket L when the needle thread trimmer travels back and forth. Then, adjust the overlapping amount between upper knife M and lower knife N. If the overlapping amount is not enough, the clamping force of the upper and lower knives will be reduced to cause needle thread slip-off. If it is excessive, the presser bar lifting lever will fail to move smoothly. The most desired overlapping amount between the upper knife and lower knife will be provided when the end face of needle thread presser spring O is flushed with the end face of upper knife M. Loosen two screws B in knife driving plate A and adjust longitudinal position of the needle thread trimmer by moving knife driving plate A back and forth. If the needle thread trimmer closes too early or the depth of engagement between the upper knife and lower knife is one millimeter or more, shift the needle thread trimmer driving plate A slightly toward 
you. When the sewing machine enters the stop motion state, the needle thread trimmer can stop at position P or Q. Check to be sure that the needle thread trimmer securely clamps the needle thread at both positions P and Q. After the adjustment, return the presser bar lifting lever to its hold position. Be sure that pin R of the needle trimmer does not come in contact with the bottom face of needle thread trimmer driving plate A and that pin R does not touch knife driving plate B. Check to be sure that the blade of the needle thread trimmer cuts the thread at portions T and Y and does not cut it at portion Z. Twenty. Pressure of spring of the needle thread trimmer. Check to be sure that the needle thread trimmer clamps the needle thread with a consistent pressure both at portions A and B. The needle thread clamping force is approximately 120 grams. If the needle thread trimmer loses its clamping force, slightly bend portion C of the spring to adjust so that the spring comes in close contact with blade D over the length to allow the needle thread trimmer to clamp the needle thread regardless of the position of the blade that cuts the thread. If needle thread trimmer fails to cut the thread sharp, sharpen blade D at the top end of upper and lower knives G and H with an oil stone. We perform sewing to relatively adjust the longitudinal position of the needle thread trimmer and that of the needle thread trimmer driving plate. If needle thread trimmer fails to provide a sufficient clamp pressure or to close properly, slip off the needle thread to arise. It is therefore necessary to finally adjust the needle thread trimmer. 21. Adjust the needle thread rolling in position at the start of sewing. The needle thread retained by the needle thread trimmer is rolled the seam at the beginning of sewing. The needle thread trimmer is improperly positioned. The needle thread may not be rolled in the seam and remain on the right side of the material as B. As a guide, Position the needle thread trimmer so that its top end is shifted approximately 0.5 to 1 mm to the left from the center of the knife slot on the throat plate. Adjust the position of the needle thread trimmer by increasing or decreasing the number of spaces D to be attached to needle thread trimmer locking bracket latch C. Since the machine stops with its needle up or down, the position at which the needle thread trimmer clamps the needle thread can vary. It is necessary to perform actual sewing first to check the position of the thread trimmer, then determine the number of spaces to be used. To neatly roll in the needle thread in the seam at the beginning of sewing, increase overaging with E. If the bar taking width is set to 3 mm or less, the needle thread rolling in performance of the machine can be more or less degraded. It is better not to reduce the overaging width more than necessary. The lower the needle thread trimmer is positioned, the better the needle thread rolling in performance will result. Position the needle thread trimmer at the lowest position as long as the needle thread trimmer does not come in contact with a work clamp check and moves without a hitch. Timing to open the needle thread trimmer. The needle thread trimmer should be so adjusted as to retain the needle thread for 2.5 to 3 millimeters from the start of sewing and gradually open. If the needle thread trimmer fails to retain the needle thread until the specified length of seam is produced, 
the needle may slip off the needle eyelet or the needle thread may fail to roll in the seam. If the needle thread trimmer retains the needle thread after the specified length of seam has been produced, bobbin thread F may appear on the right side of the material. When top end G of the latch presser arm comes off locking bracket latch C, the needle thread trimmer moves to the left. When pin S of the needle thread trimmer comes in contact with driving plate B, the needle thread trimmer opens to release the needle thread. Loosen screw A in properly adjust timing to open the needle thread trimmer by shifting locking bracket latch C back and forth. Move the locking bracket latch toward you to shorten the time during which the needle thread trimmer retains the needle thread. Move the latch away from you to lengthen it. If locking bracket latch C is installed when tilted, it can come in contact with top end G of the latch presser arm. Be sure to tighten the screw in the locking bracket latch with the latch held pressed downward. Then, move knife driving plate B back and forth to adjust so that the needle thread trimmer gradually opens after the top end of the needle thread trimmer shaft comes off the locking bracket latch. After the completion of the adjustment of the needle thread trimmer, be sure to turn the feed handle to check that the needle thread trimmer comes in contact neither with the work clamp check nor the needle when it opens. 23. Adjusting thread pulling wire J. The needle thread trimmer retains needle thread O at the start of sewing. If the needle thread is excessively tensed, the clearance will be produced between the needle thread and the material, causing bobbin thread A to appear on the right side of the material. To prevent such trouble, the thread pulling wire works to slacken the needle thread by 5 to 7 mm so as to produce a seam with consistent thrusts at the beginning of sewing. Loosen screw S and adjust thread pulling wire J. Lower wire J to increase the thread pulling amount. Adjust the thread pulling wire as far as the wire comes in contact with neither thread eyelet K nor tension disc number 1L. 24. Adjusting latch presser arm M. When lifting the work clamp check, locking bracket latch C may come in contact with top end G of the presser arm to prevent the needle thread trimmer from reaching its leftmost position, thereby causing the needle thread trimmer to hit against the needle tip. The latch presser arm works to relieve the needle thread trimmer to the left when lifting the work clamp check to avoid contact between the needle thread trimmer and the needle. Lower the presser bar lifting lever to descend latch presser arm M to its lower end. Adjust so that the clearance of approximately 0.5 mm is provided between the top surface of locking bracket latch C and the latch presser arm. Loosen two screws J and adjust the latch presser arm. 25. Position of counter knife A. Loosen set screw C in the counter knife and adjust so that blade point of counter knife A is spaced 0.3 to 0.5 mm from needle slot B in the throat plate. In addition, buff up the top end of the knife to round it before installing the counter knife since the thread may come in contact with the counter knife during sewing.
26. Replacing moving knife F. Remove screw G in the bottom thread trimmer link. Detach bed slide edge. Remove float a base I. Detach screw J from the bobbin thread tremor lever, set screw K from the bobbin thread tremor, and moving knife F. 27. Adjusting bobbin thread puller G. Adjust the remaining length of the bobbin thread that is required to form stitches at the beginning of sewing. Adequate remaining length of the bobbin thread is 36 mm. Loosen Z screw H in the bobbin thread puller. The installation angle of the bobbin thread puller to provide an adequate remaining length of the bobbin thread. Shift the bobbin thread puller upward to increase the remaining length of the bobbin thread. Sequence of operation of the thread trimmers. Needle thread trimmer I actuates to cut needle thread J. Then bobbin thread for G actuates to draw out bobbin thread J. Bobbin thread trimmer L moving knife M actuates to cut the bobbin thread. When bobbin thread puller G operates, it draws the remaining needle thread down under the wrong side of the material. Then the work clamp check starts ascending. Adjusting bobbin thread guide M. The bobbin thread guide works to retain the bobbin thread remaining after thread trimming. Install bobbin thread guide so that portion R of the bobbin thread puller meets the center of the guide. Loosen the set screw of the bobbin thread guide and shift the guide to the right and left to properly position it. If the lateral position of the bobbin thread guide is not correct, the common contact with the bobbin thread puller giving rise to an interference with the ascending work clamp check or bobbin thread puller leakage. Adjust so that the bobbin thread guide mightly hold the bobbin thread by bending portion L of the bobbin thread guide spring. 30. Adjusting bobbin picker unit A. The bobbin picker unit is connected to the bobbin thread trimmer unit. The bobbin picker unit not only presses the bobbin from rear position B of the hook when the bobbin thread puller holds the bobbin thread to prevent the bobbin from idling, but draws the remaining thread down under the wrong side of the material. It also works to secure the required amount of the bobbin thread to prevent stitch skipping or thread slip off at the start of sewing. If the bobbin thread is trimmed too short, suppose that the bobbin presser picker provides an excessive pressure. In this case, loose adjusting nut C and hand adjusting screw D counterclockwise to decrease the spring pressure. Turn the adjusting screw clockwise to increase the pressure. If you have replaced the hook or any other part that can affect the bobbin picker unit, check to be sure that the top end of the bobbin winder trip batch meets the recess hole in the hook. If the top end of the bobbin picker does not meet recess hole, loosen set screw E in the bobbin winder trip latch and adjust the height of the latch. 31. Adjusting the height of the work clamp check. The lift of the work clamp check is 12 mm. To adjust the height of the work clamp check, firstly place an appropriate gauge between the work clamp check and the throat plate and loosen the presser bar connecting set set screw A. Secondly, keeping the presser bar lifting lever fully pressed, turn presser bar position bracket B and slide roller bracket C exactly sideways while fully pressing them downward. Now, tighten the presser bar connecting stud set set screw. After the completion of the adjustment, 
Check to be sure that the work clamp check fully clamps the material over the surface. 32. Adjusting the tension release timing. Releasing the tension of tension disc number 1A. The tension disc number 1A releases tension only when the sewing machine enters the stop motion state and totally stops. The tension disc should float to make a gap of 0.5 to 1 mm. Loosen nut B of the tension post number 1 and adjust the floating mount of the tension disc by changing the installation height of the tension post number one. Releasing the tension of tension disc number 2C. Tension disc number 2C floats while the machine produces 3 to 4 rib stitches at bar taking position D and 3 to 4 stitches at the beginning of sewing. The tension disc should float to make a gap of 0.5 to 1 mm. Loosen set screw E and adjust the floating amount of the tension disc by pulling or pressing tension post socket F. Adjust the tension release timing for first bar taking section G so that the tension release is terminated one or two stitches before completion of the first bar tanking. This prevents crest of seam H from tilting to the right after completion of the first bar tank. Adjust the tension releasing duration so that the tension disc number two is held floated while three to four stitches are being formed after the start of sewing. Tension disc number 2 fails to float at the start of sewing, the needle thread can be excessively tensed to result in thread slip off. How to adjust? Tension release timing for both the tension disc number 1 and 2 is adjusted by changing the position of the cam mounted on the main cam. Adjust the tension release timing for the first bar taking section using tension release cam number 1i. Adjust the tension release timing for the start of sewing using tension release cam number 2j. Shifting them in the direction of the arrow to advance the timing to release the tension. Tension disc number 1 and number 2 float when tension release rod K goes up. When tension release rod K fails to return to its position, the machine will suddenly fail to produce neat crests of the seam. If tension release rod does not operate smoothly, loosen the screw and press collar M upward so as to increase the pressure applied by spring L to the rod. For the tension discs number 1 and number 2, increase the floating amount to lengthen the time during which the tension is released. Adjusting the thread check wire A. Adjust the thread check wire so that it comes in contact with tension guide D of the tension control number 2. When knife stop lever B comes in contact with stop with pin C of the knife bar driving lever bell crank. Loosen two set screws in knife stop lever B and adjust the thread check wire. If top end D of the thread check wire is in touch with the frame, the wire will fail to move smoothly. If it is excessively faced away from the frame, the thread may fly to cause thread breakage. After the adjustment, check to be sure that the thread check wire smoothly operates. Adjusting the thread take-up amount or thread take-up lever E. Thread take-up amount of the thread take-up lever has to be adjusted in accordance with the material thickness. Shift thread guide F to the left to increase the thread take-up amount. In this case, fully tense seams can be produced. On the contrary, shift the thread guide to the right to increase the thread take-up amount. In this case, well-tensed seam can be produced. However, the 
thread guide is excessively shifted to the right, thread take up amount will be insufficient and thread bracket can be caused. Five. Removing top cover G. Remove seven set screws. Remove two spare gears H. Loosen set screw I in each spare gear bushing and detach two spare gear bushings. Detach knife bar drive lever spring K and presser bar lifting lever spring L. Fitting screwdriver to point M and N of the recess on the top cover, prise open the top cover until it comes off. shaft will rotate but the field will not move. At this time, it is necessary to replace the worn out clutch spring with a new one. Draw out worm gear shaft P when necessary while turning it counterclockwise. Replace clutch spring O with Install new spring, first fit worm gear Q, then press in the worm gear shaft while turning it counterclockwise. Attaching the top cover, attach gasket R and S in position, taking care not to bend them. Place the top cover and pound in two knot pins D. Trending the manual handle to check that the shaft smoothly turns. Tighten the set screws in the top cover. Align set screws U of the spur gear bushing on the flat portion V of the shaft and tighten it. Thirty-seven. Lubricating mechanism. As the principle of lubrication, the main shaft is provided with an eccentric portion A. Plunger pump B sucks up oil from the oil reservoir to temporarily store the oil in oil pan D. The oil is supplied through oil wick to parts that need to be oiled. The plunger pump not only lubricates the path, but also works as an oil return pump. Excess of oil accumulating face plate is gathered through oil return felt F. The oil is sucked by the pump through oil return tube G. The sucked oil is then returned to the oil return tube C of the pump body. 8. Adjusting the oil amount. The superfluid between the lubricating oil amount and the return oil amount is adjusted using oil pump bait H. The screen R of the oil pump base consists of three components, such as unwoven fabric J that works as a filter, filter screen oil felt K, and compression spring L. The lubricating oil amount and return oil amount are adjusted by changing the number of sheets of unwoven fabric J. The standard amount of oil coming from the oil tube is 3 to CD in one minute under the high speed operation mode. The lubricating oil amount is inversely proportional for the return oil amount. This means that increasing the lubricating oil amount produces the return oil amount and vice versa. It is therefore necessary to carefully determine the number of sheets of unwoven fabric and avoid the filtering from crushing. If the tension disc number 2 fails to float to make a gap at the start of sewing, the little thread will be excessively tense to call the thread slip. If an excessive amount of oil gathers in oil return felt F, the lubricating oil amount will temporarily increase. After the excess of oil is returned, normal oiling conditions will be restored. Lubricating hook M. The hook is supplied with oil from the oil reservoir through felt N and the oil wick. Tighten oil amount adjusting screw P to decrease the amount of oil or loosen screw to increase it. If the amount of oil to be lubricated to the hook cannot be adjusted only with the oil amount adjusting screw, finally adjusted with screw Q in the sleeve arm. Oil. 
adjusting restriction plate C. If the needle thread trimmer fails to move fully backward until its home position is reached after thread trimming, it can come in contact with the needle. To prevent such trouble, restriction plate C works to return the needle thread trimmer to the rear of the needle. To adjust the restriction plate, firstly, set patch A and catch B to the low speed operating state. Now, loosen set screw E in the restriction plate and adjust so that restriction plate C comes in slight contact with the king arm D. Adjusting needle thread trimmer C. To allow the machine to perform the thread trimming sequence properly, it is inevitable to confirm that the bobbin case holder positioning finger C has been correctly adjusted. Adjust the stop motion position, bar taking position and tension release timing. Turn on the power switch. Turn the sewing machine until the stop motion position is reached. Now, adjust the position of stop motion cam F so that roller E meets marker line D engraved on the feed cam. The machine should stop in second by taking section G when it has produced two or three stitches in the parallel side section after the completion of bar taking in which the needle flows widely. Adjust the stop motion position by changing the position of second bar taking cam H. When the stop motion position is changed, the knife dropping timing and the timing of the second tension release cam will automatically change. To correct these timings, knife I has to be adjusted to drop two or three stitches before the machine enters the stop motion. Adjust knife I by shifting knife driving cam J. Adjust tension disc number 2K by shifting tension release cam number 2L so that it is held floated for the first two or three stitches after the start of sewing. Forty-four. Adjusting the longitudinal position of the knife. Loosen two set screws P in knife holder O. Shift the knife back and forth to adjust so that it does not cut sewing thread N located this side. This completes the explanation of adjusting procedures for the LBH 780.